The Bank of Japan pioneered quantitative easing in 2001 in an attempt to stimulate the country's stagnant economy. But after decades of keeping interest rates at close to zero or slightly below zero, the big unwind is inevitable, but not right away. For one, inflation is now well above the BOJ's target of 2%. Core consumer prices hit 4.2% in January. And because interest rates are kept at near zero, it's pushed the yen down in value against other major currencies. Now, it plunged to a 32-year low last year, breaching the 150 mark against the US dollar. The weaker yen lifted import prices, but nominal wages continued to stagnate. So far, the BOJ has argued that the price increases haven't yet led to a sustainable rise in wages and that loose monetary policy was still needed to support the economy amid risks of a global slowdown and banking turmoil outside of Japan. Which brings us to reason number two. Now, Japan can't afford to maintain its yield curve control, or YCC. The YCC pegs 10-year government bond yields to around zero and calls for the BOJ to buy as many bonds as needed to keep it that way. The idea is short-term rates stay around zero in a bid to stimulate the moribund economy. The BOJ has hoovered up more than $3.5 trillion worth of Japanese government bonds since quantitative easing started a decade ago. It currently owns 56% of the total Japanese government bond market. And Japan's general government debt, well, that stands at more than 260% of gross domestic product. When inflation surged last year, short sellers bet that the central bank's yield curve control was unsustainable and they staged an attack on long-dated government bonds. And that leads us to the third thing that to watch out for with Ueda at the BOJ helm. Now, his game plan is to exit the yield curve control policy. Now, he's gone on record to say that the timing needs to be right. A sign the new chief will be in no rush to overhaul policy. Market watchers now predict a series of tweaks, such as the shortening of the target duration of the YCC to three or five years from the current 10 years, but only in the second half of this year. Mr. Ueda has acknowledged, though, that the controversial YCC policy has had side effects, particularly on Japanese banks. But he says the country's financial systems remain stable as a whole and can weather the shocks. So far, Mr. Ueda has offered few clues on when or how the BOJ could phase out its massive stimulus program. Neither a monetary policy dove nor a hawk, he's promising clearer messaging to the markets to enhance key decisions, and that's something considered lacking in his predecessor. For CNA Explains, I'm Roland Lim.